Let me give you one other last principle that accompanies the deity of Christ, understanding that Jesus is God. And the last one is called monotheism. Monotheism. What does that mean? It means that there is only one God, true God, in all existence. Even when the Bible talks about other gods, it uses little g, not big g. There is only one true God in all existence. That's what the Bible teaches us. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10 says it like this. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Watch this. Look at this last verse. Look what he says. He makes it so clear. Before me, no God was formed, nor will there ever be one after me. There is only one God. And that's a good place for everybody to say amen. amen. There's only one God. He says, before me, there was no God. And even after me, there will never be another one. I'm it. What you got is what you'll have. Paul wrote in his book to the Corinthians, chapter 8, beginning at verse 5, the first book that he wrote. Look what he says. For even if there are so-called gods, notice he put it in little g, because it's not a real god. It's a fake God. Even if there were so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one God. Now, watch this. Here's Paul. He's writing to the church. He's writing to believers. He's writing to Corinthian believers. And he says, listen, even if there's some little gods you got around there and people that you that you've been calling God or little idols or little statues or whatever it is. He says for us as believers, there is but one God, the father from whom all things came and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. There's only one God. Now, Pastor, you, you're being kind of offensive. I know, and I love it. <laughs> That's not politically correct, Pastor. I know. But my job is not to be politically correct. My job is to be spiritually correct. Right. That's that's why I'm here. I, I, I'm hoping that's the reason why you come, because you realize that I'm going to do my best to not be politically correct. I'm going to do my best to not be socially correct. I'm going to do my best to be spiritually correct. That's that's the position that I'm in. You know, if I was a physical trainer, the only thing that I would be concerned about is your body and exercise. I'm not concerned with your spirit. When you go to your doctor, he's concerned about your health. When you go to your trainer, he's concerned about the muscles in your body. When you go to your school, they're concerned about your education. But when you come to church, I'm concerned about your spiritual upbringing and your spiritual growth. That's the job of the church. And sometimes when we do that, it's going to cross over into boundaries that don't feel comfortable. Let me just remind you this morning, it is not my job to offend anybody. But let me also tell you that the gospel alone is offensive. The gospel alone is offensive. If you call yourself a Christian, you are an offense to the world. We're all an offense to the world. So just the preaching of the gospel alone is offensive. So we don't have to try to be offensive. All we have to do is live our lives. Our lives alone are offensive. The preaching of the gospel itself alone is offensive. It's not designed. I'm not here to try to offend people. I'm here to try to convict people. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that convicts us to live a life Let me tell you another that reason models why this is Jesus so Christ important. the Son. And I'm so Amen. hyped up about it. It's because when you have the right information, it leads to the right kind of belief. And when you have the right kind of belief, it leads to the right kind of living. That's another place for everybody to say amen. amen. See, when, when, when you don't have the right information and you start believing the wrong stuff, the way that you live will reflect how you believe. But when you've got the right information and you start believing the right stuff and you start applying the right stuff in your life, you'll live right. And the reason why we got Christians in church that don't live right is because they don't have the right information. 
They've got the wrong information. 